This is Dr. Bob Morey with A Moment of Truth with Dr. Bob. Here is a great question from Virginia. Dear Dr. Morey, would you please tell me about true assurance of salvation and what it means in your walk with the Lord? Well, I have an actually a lecture on that. It's a CD. It's also a video. But you will find a full discussion of the assurance of salvation in the book Studies in the Atonement. There are two kinds of assurance of salvation. One is a humanistic kind, which you get from positive thinking, which you get from chanting, which you get from repeating, saying, whoever believes is saved, I believe, therefore I'm saved. Whoever believes, I'm saved. It's one where you give yourself assurance or where your pastor or your counselor give you assurance or where your parents give you assurance. That's a man-created assurance of salvation and 99 times out of 10, it's a false assurance of salvation. John Bunyan put it beautifully, more people walk conf confidently into hell assuming they are saved than those that tremble on their way to glory. Assurance of salvation is not the result of syllogisms, uh, somebody giving you assurance. I remember one crusade I was told, now give all of these people assurance of salvation. I said, I, if I give it to them, it's Bob Morey's assurance. That won't last very, very long. So you don't want the feelings of assurance or certainty of comfort to come from positive thinking or other people. That's a humanistic assurance. It comes and goes. Uh, you can lose it, take it with you, and you're often deceived by it. The second is a supernatural assurance of salvation. Now why do I say supernatural? Because the book of 1 John says, Hereby we know that we know him by the Spirit he has given to us. Again, Romans 8, For his Spirit witnesses to our spirit that we are the children of God. Or again, Galatians 4, It is the Spirit in us who cries, Abba, Father. True assurance that you are a child of God and your sins are forgiven and you're on the way to heaven is the work of the Holy Spirit alone. And he uses the means described in 1 John because as you examine yourself, you see your failures and you see the success of Jesus Christ. In other words, the more you see of grace, that you're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone, and you leave everything else alone, the more assurance of salvation you have. The more you base your assurance of salvation on your being good, reading your Bible, praying, having devotions, going to church, when you base your assurance of salvation on yourself and your works, that's a false foundation. Neither should you have philosophic assurance. Now I bring this out in the book on natural theology. The philosophers state, we are giving you philosophical arguments in order that you would have assurance that the Bible is God's Word and that God exists. So we're going to use all kind of rationalistic arguments. Question, isn't that the opposite of what Paul said? If you look clearly at 1 Corinthians 2, Paul said, I did not come to you using philosophical arguments, lest your faith be the result of those philosophic arguments instead of being the product of the power of God. 
Only God can convince you that you're on his side. All the arguments in the world given by the most brilliant natural theologians will only make you an educated sinner on your way to hell. Philosophic assurance is no assurance at all. Remember this on this particular question. If you were argued into the kingdom by some smart natural theologian, you can be argued out of the kingdom by some smart atheist. Instead, Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal to you that I am the Messiah, but your Father in heaven revealed this to you. Saving faith, true assurance, has to do with the work of God in the heart, and it is a supernatural work of the Spirit. Thank you for sending in your question via the emails. There are so many questions and so many people, I can't answer all of them. The questions that we welcome at Faith Defenders are theological, biblical, apologetical, philosophical, having to do with truth and morals, not personal. May God bless you richly as you pursue this site. May you read and grow in the knowledge and in the grace of God.